Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel, The Ninth Cup, where all of my readings focus on your soul's destiny and everything you can do to embody your soul's purpose. This is going to be the Midhaven reading for the sign of Capricorn. If your Midhaven is in Capricorn, this reading is for you. It is a general reading, so just apply what resonates and leave the rest. For those of you that are current subscribers, thank you, welcome back. Thank you for helping me support my channel and grow my channel through commenting, sharing, and liking the videos. For those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Karen Michelle Yearwood. I am an intuitive guidance counselor, and I am here to deliver messages from spirit regarding different aspects of your natal chart. So for today, we're focusing on the Midhaven, and that is an aspect of your natal chart that is about your professional life, what energies you can use to be abundant and prosperous as it relates to your career, your reputation, your external facing uh, persona. And it is indicated by the letters MC between the ninth and 10th houses in your chart. And the energies of your Midhaven really are backed by Saturn and Saturn rules the 10th house. So wherever the Midhaven is placed, in this case, it's Capricorn, the natural zodiac sign um, for the 10th house and it's ruled by Saturn. Um, this is a beautiful placement, but just in general, Midhaven energy is always kind of blanketed by Saturn. Also look for your Venus placement, your Mars placement, and whatever is in your second house. The second house rules, commu not communication, excuse me, it rules personal income, possessions, and even the physical body. It's one of the houses of Venus. Venus, a planet that rules abundance, prosperity, and our stability. It's not just love. And Mars is what keeps us devoted and motivated. So that those are also energies to consider when looking at your professional and career life. So for Capricorn, I'm going to start your reading out by a few oracles from Angels in Your Biz Oracle Deck. It is by Emily Ahrens. And these oracles are just really relevant for getting, you know, energies for the Midhaven. So I'm using these. They're really big cards. I'm trying to shuffle really well for you guys to get some overall energies for your reading. So the first one I have is Outsource. Stop trying to do everything alone. Okay, so this could be getting some help, maybe hiring... Um, an administrative assistant, um, a virtual assistant. Healing, schedule healing work. Yeah, take time out maybe for yourself. Capricorn is a hardworking energy, so that could be hard to do. And then wealth, you're surrounded by abundance. Absolutely, Capricorn. This is my reading as well. I'm a Midhaven in Capricorn. I'm also a Venus in Capricorn. So we'll see what this comes through for us. And what source has to come through and tell us um outsource stop trying to do everything alone yeah so with that you know really steadfast determined committed energy that capricorn has it's easy to get overwhelmed and think you have to do all of the small tasks alone um this could be even asking small things like favors from people um, asking for assistance on how to's to make things easier for your life um not really being so bogged down um with day-to-day -day things if this relates to you. And this could be in all areas of your life. I'm not getting that this is just professional. I'm thinking that this is just kind of across the board, um, asking for assistance, right? Asking for help or just setting some expectations for people that are in your life that are close to you. And then also letting people know the expectations and the, and the limits of yourself. Like you won't be, you know, answering emails after a certain time or, you know, setting a 124 rule, which I learned back when I was at corporate is, you know, responding within one hour, having a resolution or follow up within 24 hours, something like that. That's just going to help you again, manage what's on your plate. Um, so it's not exactly outsourcing, I know, but it's just, again, taking the load or the feeling of having a heavy load off of yourself. Healing, healing meaning definitely prioritizing yourself. This is the energy I'm getting from that healing card. Prioritizing yourself, your health, your wellness, your um, sense of stability I'm getting too. Some of you could be feeling just a little bit, um, even though you're accomplishing things, things are getting done, you're just feeling like some level of an imbalance or just um, like a hamster on a wheel I'm getting, you know, just kind of working and working and just not really ever getting to a goal or a target goal, even though they're like little wins along the way. I think that's um, typical Capricorn energy because it just can keep going, going and going. All of the earth signs are like that, but with Capricorn probably even more so because Capricorn is very, um, it's it's very it's more mature it's more mature energy it is the most advanced of the earth signs so it wants that sense of like you know accomplishment and 
um, status and you know, the reputation, you know, everything that's in that 10th house and that, that's embodied in that midhaven, this, that's Capricorn energy. Wealth, that's another thing that Capricorn loves. Um, knowing that you're surrounded by abundance. So it may not always be in the form of money or in the form of like a big fancy, you know, high profile job, but it's that, you know, your energy, what you're doing, what you're committed to, what you're, um, what you're focused on, right? What you are setting your intention to accomplish is really, really going to be, you know, it's going to be maximized. I'm just getting this energy of like, it's going to be given back to you tenfold. So for those of you who feel like you've just been working and working towards something or being a part of something and it there just seems like there's no end to it or it's not leading anywhere, I just feel like the universe is going to reward you in abundance through like just a ton of more opportunities and experiences, new connections. And so just don't really get discouraged if you feel a little bit overwhelmed at this time. Um, big things are on the way. All right, so let's go ahead and move to your astrology cards. The astrology oracles are planet cards, house cards, and zodiac signs. So I want to get a few of these as well to see what else we can focus on for your reading. Your first zodiac sign is Sagittarius. I just did that reading. Sagittarius. So some of you could have strong placements in Sagittarius. It's your neighbor house, your neighbor zodiac. Your house card is, oops, flipped over is the 12th house, a house of dreams, spirituality, mystics, occult practices, the ethereal realm, the fifth dimension. Okay, so this is definitely about manifestation. Interesting, what else? Jupiter, <laughs> the ruling planet of Sagittarius. So some of you could have your Jupiter in the 12th house, your Jupiter in Sagittarius, or you could have, you know, Sag in your 12th house kind of a thing. Um, this is really interesting energy, Capricorn. I love it. So Jupiter rules the planet Sagittarius. Jupiter is about expansion. It's about luck. It's about gifts. Jupiter, he kind of comes through. He's a great benefic. He puts the icing on the cake. Um, he makes things expand. So and it's interesting that this Jupiter came out right over wealth, right? You're surrounded by abundance. So it kind of just goes back to what I was channeling. I didn't even pull the card, right? And I channeled that you're going to be reward at 10x of whatever you have poured into, whatever you have invested in, um, whatever you, you know, have just kind of like effortlessly worked towards Jupiter, the, the cosmos, spirit, God, whatever you want to call it, is going to come through and really, really bless you. Um, this 12th house energy, it's coming out over the healing oracle card which is perfect because the 12th house is about spirituality. It's about your connection to source, um, your divine downloads, really being connected to the things of the ethereal, um, more esoteric things. So we are coming up on a full moon in the sign of Scorpio. Um, I'm recording this on the 19th of April. So I think the full moon is like on the 26th, I think of April. And it's in that sign of Scorpio um, in the water sign. The 12th house is the house of Pisces. That's a water sign. So again, it's more about even, you know, purging, looking at your emotions. I know that's not typical Capricorn energy, right? It's very stoic, but I think that this can help you step into your purpose and what's meant for you a little bit easier and help you, um, help you feel more safe carrying out the things that you really want to be a part of, if that makes sense. So not just doing your job, but being a part of something, like really like being. So not just doing, but being. So being of service, being a spiritual leader, you know, giving guidance, um, being a point of reference for people that are or that are possibly looking for guidance outside of like the typical career thing, you know, really, you know, stepping into that divine um, leader I'm getting for some of you. And I'm channeling this probably because of Jupiter 12th house, obviously 12th house spirituality, shamanic energy, but Jupiter and Sagittarius are also about teaching. It's about expansion of knowledge and consciousness. So that kind of spills over into, again, whatever it is you're doing, really carrying that energy of like, being a leader, also learning, being the student, um, being open to travel, not just physically, but travel through different modalities, right? And learning how to do things in different ways, just really being really um, versatile. Yeah, and with outsource, um, but the Sagittarius energy, that could be like maybe you outsourcing, like you kind of going to different um, leaders or subject matter experts I'm getting, like maybe you sitting in on like, um, 
workshops or sending it on seminars, sending or just watching videos like previously recorded videos of some sort that's going to give you some insight on how you can do what you do better or just, you know, in a, in a different way. Um, so that's what I'm getting. Currently, Jupiter is sitting in the sign of Aquarius. And he's retrograde, I think. He's going to officially move into Pisces a little bit at the end of this year. I think in like the fall, I think he's going to be officially be and be in Pisces, but which is a 12th house, by the way. But with Jupiter and Aquarius, um, it kind of is blanketing the collective in terms of doing things differently. So that's what I'm getting this for you, Capricorn. And um, Aquarius is the sign ahead of you. And Sag is the sign behind you. You're kind of sandwiched right between Sag and Aquarius. So maybe that's kind of where I'm getting those energies from is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> All right, you guys, let's see what we have for your tarot. I'm using the Modern Witch Tarot deck. Oops, your first card out, it flipped out. Ten of Wands, absolutely. So Outsource was the first Oracle and now you have Ten of Wands. Wands energy is fire energy. Sagittarius is a fire sign. Putting down burdens, okay? Also completing cycles. Tens are culminations and completions. So putting down, feeling like you're responsible for everything. Putting down, um, you know, having to get things done in a certain time frame. Like relaxing a little bit, knowing that, you know, there's another day. Like it's not the end of the world. If something didn't get crossed off, something did not get crossed off your to-do list else okay next card Ooh, beautiful the sun happiest card in the deck card of leo fire energy masculine energy but it's also illumination and healing you know you do have the healing oracle here in the middle and the sun card is a healing element as well but it's also happiness and abundance and bliss coming through um you know achievement as well so this is beautiful energy you guys high priestess she is piscean energy that fifth house, excuse me, not fifth house, that fifth dimension energy, 12th house energy. She's the keeper of secrets. She knows everything. She's a master manifester. The high priestess can bring into fruition what she thinks is necessary for her. She's above the empress, obviously above all the queens as well. So this is you embodying that. Remember I was channeling shamanic energy, teaching energy. The high priestess is that as well. Okay. And it's 12th house energy. You have 12th house on the, on the board here. Seven of Cups. Now this did come out in reverse. I don't read reversals, but Seven of Cups is just having a lot of options. Also maybe a lack of clarity. The thing with the 12th house is that because it is the house of dreams, it also rules illusions and, you know, shadowy energy, things that aren't clear or things that maybe um, we think are still available to us, but they're not and vice versa. Things we think that are, are not available and they are. It's that kind of energy. So I think with this, it's really just slowing down and asking, again, getting connected with source, with your higher power, your ancestors, your guides, and asking for assistance. You know, that could be a part of the outsource as well. That outsource card, that first oracle we got with, you know, asking for help, um, not feeling like you're responsible for everything. This also could be you just asking, you know, your ancestors, your angels to help you to show you the way, to give you little signs, to give you little, um, you know, to come to you through through dreams, right? That's 12th house, come to you through your dreams, to speak to you through those means, to give you clarity and insight on how to move forward, um, what choices to make, um, what could be, you know, on the horizon for you. Um, now, again, I think because it came out in reverse, I think it was just an indication that you are gonna be able to make a decision very quickly quickly or with a level of certainty, I mean. Um, but again, it just could be, you know, presented to you. Like a, basically what I'm saying is a lot of things are presented to you at once and that can maybe create the, you know, the confusion and lack of clarity just temporarily. But I think that you're going to come out of that. Beautiful. The Empress. Fertility, feminine energy, prosperity, abundance. Um, Venus is exalted here in the Empress card. Venus is an important part of the Midhaven. Um, so this is like new beginnings too. New projects coming into fruition, um, new endeavors, new ideas being birthed. Um, things that really are going to also prosper over a period of time. Knight of Swords. Interesting. Going towards 
your truth. Also being unapologetically you, speaking your truth, defending your position on things, um, your own you know, beliefs, your values. Swords energy is about the intellect. It is about also verbalizing things in a very honest and um, clear way, you know, honest and clear and tactful. So just being able to speak up for yourself. I'm getting with this energy too is like titles. I don't know where exactly how that resonates. It's going to be different for all of you. It's a general reading, but with this Knight of Swords, I'm getting title, like you choosing a title or a name for yourself or a name of a company or name of a logo or something, a product or something. I'm just getting that. The, the meaning of the card isn't that, but that's just what I'm getting intuitively. Look guys, Ten of Pentacles. Ten of Pentacles coming out here with abundance and Jupiter. You can't make this stuff up. I'm literally just shuffling the cards and picking the cards out for um, what comes out, the, you know, the most. So Ten of Pentacles is absolute abundance in the physical realm. So money, resources, a stable home life, a stable job um, or stable career, I should say. And, you know, it's coming out with Jupiter and with wealth. So, I mean, it doesn't really get any better than that. I don't need to say anything else. Page of Pentacles, so an offer, okay, an offer coming towards you um, that you can accept to b continue building your prosperity. Oh, and the lovers, oh, two cards flipped. The Hanged One and the Lover. So two major arcanas flipped. The Hanged One is card of Pisces. You have the 12th house here. You have two Piscean energies here with the Hanged One, the High Priestess and the 12th house and the Lover's card, card of Gemini. But it's about making a choice. So to kind of, Go back to what I was saying with that seven of cups energy is a lot a lot of things being presented to you, maybe a lot of opportunities coming to you at once. They're all good, they're all appealing to you, and you have to make a choice. But be patient with yourself. Um, don't act on impulse, don't necessarily take the shiniest, brightest one. Really think about how you can bring about your own abundance. So, what I'm getting here as well, and I can connect to this personally, is there could be like one obvious way that you can make a certain amount of money, right? But there could be another option that seems like a little roundabout or that seems like a shortcut. But really, when you think about it, is it brings in more abundance, more opportunities, even more money over the long haul than that immediate, like clear offer, if you know what I mean. So it just could be that, you know, Maybe you don't do the tried and true method of something or you don't take someone up on their offer immediately. You type, you take another route and it just seems like it's not smart. Maybe to that person or to you, you're like, hmm, maybe should I even do this? Maybe I should just take, you know, this clear, obvious way of doing something, but doing it the other way, really trusting your gut, trusting your own intuition, right? 12th house energy, high priestess knowing that you're going to be abundant knowing that something is going to come through for you it's like you come into more you come into that 10x those blessings i mentioned earlier through trusting your gut through setting your intentions through keeping your vibration high and you know but it's just here in the 3d it seems like it's more work or it seems like it's like a complicated way of doing things but it's not it's just you knowing that you're divinely guided to do it that way so apply that as it reason it's to you but that's what I'm getting with that hangman energy because hangman is like suspension, right? It's like patience, things aren't really happening, but I'm getting it's because you're choosing to do something your way. That also could be a little bit of the page of pentacles energy too. Pages is something that's um, in its initiation or newer or just um, like undeveloped, right? It's It could be a young person, but I think in this situation, it's the energies of like a, of an endeavor that's going to bring in abundance for you, physical material abundance. Okay, Caps, let's get our few angel answers and wrap everything up. I love this reading for us. We have success. <laughs> um, success. What else do we have? I'm just going to shuffle a little bit more. Choose a new direction. What did I just say? I literally just explained that. I spent like two minutes explaining that. Choosing a new way of doing something. Don't take what's right in front of you that is like clear and it's all laid out and it's perfect and it makes sense. Choose a new direction that maybe is off the grid and I think that that's gonna bring in something more for you. And people may not understand it or support it, but listen, there's something on the other side here. I just, I just know it, High Priestess, I just know it. And you will know it too. And then romance, ooh. 
We have romance and we even have the lover's card here. So this could be a new divine counterpart coming in or a current partnership strengthening, um, going the distance, going to the next level of commitment kind of a thing. And you just getting, you know, more clear on what you really want in your romantic relationships. Yeah. And so making that choice too, making that choice to strengthen a relationship, maybe walk away. In this case, I'm getting that it's strengthen a relationship, really, you know, sink into being committed and partnered and things like that. Cause you have the 10 of pentacles here. That's usually family and, um, yeah, household energy. So that's what I have for us, Capricorn. I love this reading. I hope you do as well and it resonates. Like the video if it does. Subscribe to the channel if this is your kind of thing. And my email, I keep saying email, my website. My website is linked below, but my email is on the website, obviously. Um, there that you can check out for personal readings and other stuff. So thank you guys so much. I hope to see you in the next one and be sure to thrive. Bye.